Having a website is an absolute must in this digital society and electronic age that we're in. But here's the thing, you can't just have a website. It has to be amazing. It has to be firing on all cylinders and working for you and not against you. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do exactly that. I'm gonna give you some advice and some tips. After building hundreds of websites, I know a thing or two about what it takes. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. This is all about the brand. Let's go. Number one, always include contact information. Listen, put it in people's face. Don't make them guess. Don't make them have to search for how to get in touch with you because that's a big part of having a website is capturing people's information, making sure that they're able to easily get in touch with you and know where the contact information is. And so honestly, some people like to pick up the phone and just call. Old school, right? That's just how some people are. And it's okay, it's cool. Me on the other hand, I'm different. I like to send an email and you can contact me through that way or I can contact you that way. So having a contact form is very important. And here's the thing, I know how unattractive, plain and boring contact pages are, but you need them. All right, you gotta have them. There's not really much you can do, but you gotta have the contact form page. And so it's very, very important. So that's number one. Make sure you have the contact information easily accessible so people don't have to search for it. Number two, don't have too much text on your website. Man, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, right? But I should. Look, no one wants to read 10, 15, 20 paragraphs of your text. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that, man. Seriously, like we're busy people. I understand you're a busy person. This is a 21st century. Come on, man. Like don't have too much text on your website. A good ratio is a 70-30 ratio. 70% images and visuals and graphics, 30% text. Now I'm not saying that you need to abandon text altogether, but what I am saying is that there needs to be a good balance. It needs to be a cohesive flow between the images and the text, okay? I, I can't tell you how many websites I've seen where there is just so much text on it and I just keep scrolling, keep scrolling, and then I'm out. I'm bouncing, all right? <laughs> Number three, have clear, strong, visible call to actions. This is very, very important because you can have a beautiful website. You can do all the things right, right? You can have a good balance of images and text, but if you don't have a way to capture people and start to build a relationship, you're, you're, you're null and void. Your website is null and void. And so you gotta have strong calls to action. So there are two types of calls to actions. There is a primary or direct call to action, which is buy now call now, request a consultation, schedule a meeting, right? Those are direct. That is directly linked to your business and directly linked to your business goal. And then there is the second type, which is a secondary call to action or a transitional call to action. And this is really where you get to build that relationship. So an example is download this PDF or solution brief or free guide. You, you, if you don't have some type of free lead capture or lead magnet, you need to have that right now, okay? So download a guide, read a blog post, watch a video. These are secondary call to actions. Now they're, they're not as uh, important, but they do hold some significance in helping you capture uh, your, your customers and your visitors information so that again, you can start to build that relationship with them, which is very, very important. So speaking of call to actions, where to put them is also very important. I recommend top, middle, and bottom. Top of the page, above the fold. If you don't know what above the fold is, it's everything that you visually see without having to scroll, right? So when you go to a website, you see everything that's above the fold. Once you start scrolling down the page, that's below the fold. And so primarily your call to actions need to be above the fold in the hero section or the header section have a direct or primary call to action and have a secondary call to action. Those buttons right there and make sure that there are contrasting colors so they stand out from the background, okay? And then as you scroll down a little bit more, maybe you wanna have a secondary call to action, maybe a form, a little slim form where people can download something or they can sign up for your email list. And then certainly another call to action at the very bottom of the page. After they've read everything, they've gone through everything, boom, now it's the time to take action. Okay, number four. 
don't put your social media icons at the top. Now, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 Dwight. I understand. <laughs> That's some scary movie. I know what you're probably thinking. Hey, I need people to know I'm on social media, right? I need people to go to our Facebook page and like us there. Follow us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter and retweet us and like our, like our stuff on LinkedIn. Look, I get it, okay? Everybody know that you're on social media. You are a modern company in this modern society. So yes, you are going to be on social media. It's pretty much a given, but you can't put that stuff at the top of the page because guess what it does? It's you're inviting people to leave your website, which contributes to your bounce rate. A bounce is when a visitor comes to your website, they don't take any action and they leave immediately. All right? That's a bounce. It's like a ball. You bounce it, goes down it comes back up and so people are leaving the website and so you need to make sure that you're not doing these three things people bounce from your website because of misrepresentation maybe what they saw before they clicked on the link didn't actually represent what's on the website when they get there number two is slow load times which is very very rampant and very important you got to have your website to load very very fast and then the third reason is you have external links like your social media icons at the top Okay, so I recommend putting those at the bottom of the website. People still can get it, but it's more of an afterthought. The last thing people need to think about when they come to your website is visiting you on Facebook, right? That's the last thing that they need to be thinking about because honestly, they probably came from social. They're either gonna come from social media, right? Or they're gonna come from email marketing, or they're gonna come directly to your website where they just type in the address. So put your social media icons at the bottom.